Hi, I'm Christopher Stewart. Now, why do agents get me upset all the time? Quite simply, it's because what should they be? They should be a means to an end. They should be a job service. They should be, oh, hi, I want to be in the entertainment industry. Oh, great, I need more clients. Let me help you right along. Here, let's see what you can do. Fantastic. Now let's get you some jobs. That's what every agent in the world should be. Why? An agent only makes 10, 15, 25% or less of your contract. So because of that, the agent should be eager to try and get rich. The agent should be eager to try and get you rich. So the agent should be, let's try and do as many contracts as possible for as many clients as possible. That's what an agent should be. What are they? Most of the time they're alcoholics. Most of the time they are filled with alcoholic ideals, which means I get to decide who is famous. Okay. I have talked with so many agents over the course of my life. It's sick. And when you sit there and actually listen to some of them go, well, let's see, I got a pile of letters. Let, let's look at the first one. Oh, I w just got out of college. I'm hoping to be, hope to be a star, never will be a star. Toss. That's what a lot of it is. A lot of it is they are trying to be drama critics. And that's the thing. They're trying to be drama critics. And they don't even know how to be drama critics. Okay? That's the biggest problem with an agent. Agents in the United States from the East Coast to the West Coast, top to bottom, are all trying to be drama critics. I haven't met a single one that isn't and yet none of them actually even know how to be a drama critic. Well, some people who watch this film are actually going to learn how to look at film. I'm going to take my time on this. I may even do this in several parts. I'm going to explain things not just to fellow actors, to the public, but also to agents. And I'm going to show the entire industry things that most people never even think about, let alone see, let alone understand. What am I talking about? One singular sensation every little step she takes. This is only known by Broadway. Present Showcase Platform Pedestal. How many people even know those words? How many people even understand that? I'm going to go very in depth into explaining exactly what that is and what that means. The biggest problem with America is everybody's Morshack. Okay? What is the greatest drawback to Morshack acting? Of all the drawbacks to Morshack acting, what is the absolute greatest drawback to Morshack acting? I'll tell you right now. Morshack acting is, I am going to do this. So, did anyone ever tell you you're not alone in your cast? Did anyone ever tell you that you're actually not the star of the show? One of the biggest problems with Morshack acting 
is everybody is upstaging everybody else. Okay? You see a couple of Morshak actors together in a scene. What are you watching? You are watching, I am upstaging you, you are upstaging me, I am upstaging you, you are upstaging me. And that's all you are seeing. Because they're all, I must be here. I am showing this. I am doing that. That's all they are. They can't necessarily help that. It's not taught in the United States to actually be a supporting actor. If you look at somebody in the United States and say you are a supporting actor, what is their response? Do they even know what you mean? Well, if you got an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, I guess that means you were helping along with the script, right? Let's go back to agents and drama critics, okay? If I show an agent a series of films and say, that's me, what does the agent do? Well, the first thing the agent does is he listens to the dialogue. I didn't write the dialogue. Why do you care what the dialogue says? The second thing an agent does is he looks at the type of film. Oh, it's one of those B films. Take any agent in America, give them a resume. The first thing that agent is going to do is say, oh, come on, a book? You really expect me to read that? Every agent from um, theatrical to literary is going to pick up your submission and read your cover letter, maybe. They're going to skim it. They're going to sit there and say, well, da 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 And they're going to say, why is this person worth my time? Why should our great company represent him? Okay? Give you an example. Several agents will look at my resume and say, oh, I knew it. Extra, 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 extra. Why does every extra always send me every single extra role they ever did? Okay. I can tell you that just from the rejection slips I've gotten, let alone the fact that I've had long, extensive conversations with a lot of agents from New York to California. All right. Now, here's the thing. If you look at somebody and say, well, you did that. Well, so what? You're a B actor. Okay and all this and all that. It's all about, well, da, da da It's a foreign film. It's over there. It's in one of those countries. I mean, God, why did you do that? It destroyed your career. I mean, you've, you wouldn't believe the crap I have heard from agents all throughout my life. And when you look at it from that perspective, you go, okay, do you people even know anything at all? So how do you work with this? Well, either A, you do what everybody else does and says, okay, I'm going to do whatever to please you. There are two roads in the industry. Either A, you can please everybody else, get a fast road to a career, be a superstar, and hate every moment of your life for the rest of your life. Or you can be yourself and you can say, I'm not gonna stand for that. I'm gonna do what I do and you're gonna like it or leave it because somebody out there is gonna see me, somebody out there is gonna connect with me and that's all there is. It's a long road it's a hard road, but when you're done, you like yourself and your career. And you can tell us that alcoholics to go shove it. 
there are more alcoholics in the industry than in most places in the, in the world. But most of those alcoholics are not actors. They're not directors. They're agents. And that's just the bad side of the whole industry. And there's no reason to put up with it. And you, what you should do is look at an agent and say, if you're going to be a drama critic, learn to be one. Because, yeah, so what? It's a B film. Do you even know what's going on in the scene? Now, I'm going to show you a couple of scenes. And then I'm going to talk about them afterwards. Mi piace, non è vero? Il tetto è di caramellata. Le mura sono di marzapane. Le sedie di zucchero candito. I letti di squisito budino al cioccolato. Le decorazioni sui muri sono fatte di caramello e pistacchi. E la casa è piena di vasi riempiti con panna montata. Farebbe la felicità di qualsiasi bambino del mondo. E sono sicuro che saprete apprezzare quello che ho fatto per voi. Non avete assolutamente niente da temere qui dentro. Ora potete non avere più paura. Invece ce l'abbiamo. A noi non importa di cosa è fatta la casa. Dentro ci vogliamo le persone che amiamo. Amore. Amore, amore. Detesto quella parola. È possibile che solo l'amore possa ridarvi il sorriso? Se voi volete veramente vederci sorridere, allora lasciateci liberi, signore. Oh, certo. Sì, lo farò. Prima però voglio sapere chi di voi è legato al mio destino. E come? E perché? Ma finché non cominciate a parlare non potrò scoprirlo. Non ci aprirete la bocca con le vostre caramelle? Te l'avevo detto, era più facile torturarli. Vi rifiutate ancora di parlare? Beh, pensateci. Quando vi sarete decisi a farlo, e sono sicuro che lo farete, bussate per tre volte su questo fungo. E se dovessero abbattere le mura? Sta tranquilla. L'unico modo per farlo è mangiarle. E io lo renderò impossibile. Adesso ti farò vedere come. Userò tutta la mia magia. E tutta la mia cattiveria. Jeremy Perrin? Shit. You gotta be kidding. You mean he works here? You two classmates? Yeah, yeah. Jeremy here usually spends his summers at the Gray Bar Hotel. You got nothing on me, Sherlock. I'm strange. What's your angle here, pal? Strictly legit. Tell him the dean. Jeremy really does work for Mr. Johnson. Well, speaking of Mr. Johnson, I came by to pay a call on him. Oh, I wasn't aware the doctor still made house calls. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't aware that Chief Hoods knew how to read. Come on, guys. Mr. Johnson is resting in his study. Is Jeremy really a criminal? Nah, small time. Maybe he's trying to reform. No way. You can't believe that Jeremy would want to better himself, is that it? Oh, sure. But then I also donated to Jimmy Tammy Baker. <laughs> talk much, do you? Guess I don't have too much to say. Well, if people only talked when they had something to say, it'd be a very quiet world. Would that be so bad? 
No. I suppose not. With someone so quiet, you certainly communicate with those horses. Horses feel. They can sense things. Maybe if people took more time, they'd feel things, too. Maybe. Now, if I showed these four scenes, one from Fantiguro, one from Tracy Lord's Not of This Earth, one from uh, Young Lady Chatterley, and one from um, Biggles Adventures in Time, to any agent in the United States, they would say, you're kidding me, right? And you want me to represent you. Okay? If I sent it to CAA as a submission, as a resume, and put the names down, they'd look at me and say, you have got to be kidding me. Why would I represent you? Now, I would look at the agent and say, what can you possibly have against this? And the agent would look at me and say, one, I don't doubt that you're a good actor, but you did a foreign film. Wow. Never seen it. Don't even know what it is. Can't even understand the language. Two, you did a B-rated Roger Corman film. Who cares? How many people have been in B-rated films over the centuries? Like you're going to be the next Tom Cruise because you're in a B-rated film? You're going to be the next Johnny Depp because you were in a B-rated film? No. Okay? You're not big enough. You're not interesting enough. Okay? Oh, and the other one, so you were an extra sitting in the background. So you fell. So you were a stuntman. That is how an agent at CAA would look at it. And I would say, one, I was Jim Ferguson in Biggles Adventures in Time. Now let me explain Biggles' adventures in time. In that particular scene, you are looking at a mime platform. What? Now, when you look at it, there's no sound. There's no dialogue. Oh my God, how can I judge a scene with no dialogue? Well, it's just a couple of director's cuts. No, it isn't. Because a director can control where you are positioned in a scene. A director cannot control how you move. A screenwriter tells you what to say, but not how to say it. Okay? This is the difference between understanding and being a drama critic and being a drama critic. Okay? Um, you know, you look at most people and they say, well, I was watching the lines. That was a funny exchange you had. You're watching the lines. Who cares what the lines are? How are the lines said? What was happening in the scene that the actors are actually doing? Are you even noticing there are actors there? Or are you just watching the screenplay, seeing what the director shows you? Now, Biggles Adventures in Time, let's go back to this. It's a mime platform. comprised of several large stars that are not saying anything, they're just moving. And 
The interesting thing about it is you have Biggles, who is the star of the show. But he doesn't like being the star of the show. He's not a star. He's a supporting actor. So he wants to help the support. And the support is saying, you're a star. That's called a pedestal. A competing pedestal is when two supporting actors are trying to showcase each other. One is trying to say, you're the star. And the other is trying to say, no, you're the star. No, you're the star. It's a back and forth. No, you're the star. That is a pedestal. And Biggles Adventures in Time received two British Golden Anvil Awards. I received a British Golden Anvil for Supporting Actor, and he received a Golden Anvil for Supporting Actor. This is the A and B Anvil, and you're looking at it in mime. So you're trying to trash an Oscar because you don't understand what the Oscar is. Now, we go backwards with a showcase. And what do you have? Young Lady Chatterley 2. I am supposed to talk quiet, you're saying, because she's saying you talk quiet. So you have to talk quiet because she says to you're talking quiet. I'm talking quieter than her because I'm showcasing her. You don't want to look at me, you want to look at the model. Therefore I'm directing you to the model. I am showcasing the model. I'm pedestaling the model because the model has to be on a pedestal. It's a simple platform because you have two supporting actors working off of each other. This is a key counter key. Okay. And I'm presenting her. I'm presenting her because I'm looking away from her, because I'm looking towards her, because though I'm walking forward, I am saying, look at what's walking beside me, behind me. And I'm not doing this with dialogue. I'm doing this with body position. I'm doing this with uh, looks, with glances, with changing of movement within the scene. Okay? Now you have the scene of Tracy Lord's Not of This Earth. Now everybody knows that what we are doing is showcasing Tracy. Tracy is the pedestal. Tracy's going, I don't want to be a pedestal! So she keeps trying to go down. And we keep trying to go up. And by the same token, I'm going, I ain't the star of this show! And they're like, yes, you are! And everybody is pointing to me and trying to raise me up on a pedestal. And I'm going, stop that! Get, get. This is competing anti-pedestal. The movement of the uh, sunglasses in the scene, you can sound, you can say like, well, so you're playing with a pair of glasses, that's all it looks like. It's an arm bar. It's not just the actor to you, to you. It's an arm bar. It's also connected arm bar because the extra next to me, who isn't technically an extra, he's a supporting cast member, is always directing the camera to me because he's looking at me. So in this sequence you have me sitting there talking, you have the other star across from me who is a bigger star than I am who's saying no I'm not, you're the star. I won't divulge who he actually is because he's in makeup with a false name in a widely seen film. These are supporting actors working together to create a platform. And we are counter countering each other constantly sitting there going, No, I'm not on a pedestal. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. And it's a back and forth play. Now you go to the big one, Fantagiro. 
you can go, well, it's just a foreign film, I don't understand anything about it. Really? Guess what it is? It's an Italian Golden Caesar Award. Probably one of the rarest, hardest awards to get in Italy. Probably one of the hardest, rarest awards to get in the world. You go to the Caesars, you're, you're talking operatic awards. Okay? Now, what's very important about this is you have me and Ursula Andrus and Nicoletta Elmi and a bunch of kids. When you're working with child actors or when you're working with people younger than you, it is extremely important that you understand how to do these things, how to showcase, how to present, how to pedestal, how to platform. Because no matter what the lines say, you have to work with everybody else to make them feel like they are more important than they are. A key factor to all of Hollywood and all of film is the fact that you are important. I don't care if you're an extra, I don't care if you are uh, the star, a minor part, you are important. You're important because the director wanted you there. You're important because you're important to make the entire scene happen and you're important because you're you. When you're working with children, you have to bring the child forward within the scene. Even if you're a child yourself. Even if you're a teenager working with someone who's nine. You have to bring them forward in the shot. You have to make them the star of the scene. And even when the dialogue, this is the most complex part of this entire sequence, because I have to be the star. I have to be. I'm the main villain. So I have to downgrade and I have to put my platform through the floor and raise them up on a pedestal. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, I cross over to Nicoletta and I draw my hand across her cheek, saying, you're the star. It's a very difficult thing, but this is real theater. This is how to be a drama critic. This isn't just, oh, well, so what? I'm an agent, so I think I know what I'm doing. No, this is how real theater is. You want to be a drama critic? Learn to be one. Go to a few courses. Okay? That's what really upsets me the most about agents. They think they can tell us what we know, how to act. No. All they are, all an agent ever is, is a means to a director. Nothing more. If they're your friend, cool. But if they think they're more than that, they are seriously wrong. Because you're the star. Their company is not a star. You are.